Oh, hey guys! So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'll be answering your questions on bank financing for freelancers and first time home buyer questions. So let's get on. I need the ago I received an email from one of my subscribers here on YouTube and she was asking me a lot of questions about acquiring her first property and also being approved because she is a freelancer so she's actually a 22 year old freelancer and she's wondering if she can be approved of a bank loan and she had also a lot of questions about buying her first property so I'm going to be sharing her questions with you guys and of course also answering them as well so let's check those out question number one based on my research the banks or Pagibi will only consider 50% of my monthly income because of the instability as a freelancer but I have been working with the same company for two years just not directly and I am only paid through Upwork. Is it still possible for me to acquire a pre-selling condo unit? So the first thing you need to understand is how much the banks will give you as a loan based on your gross income. So for example, for locally employed individuals, if their salary is let's say 100000 then the banks will usually consider whatever is on their payslip to be their gross monthly income. This is a little bit different when it comes to freelancers if you don't have a permanent position with your company. So in this case, because she's only working through Upwork, she doesn't have a permanent position with the company. So the banks will actually only consider more or less 35 to 50% of her gross monthly income. So let's say, for example, her income is 100,000. So the banks will only consider her income to be 35,000 or 50,000 per month. So this is relevant because the banks will only allow you to loan about, let's say, 30%. So if you are locally employed, you will actually be allowed to loan 30,000 per month amortization because 30,000 is 30% 30 of 100k but if you are a freelancer and you're not you don't have a permanent position so instead of 100k being your gross monthly income it's only 50% so that's 50,000 per month times 30% which is about 15,000 pesos so the banks will allow you to have a monthly amortization of 15,000 pesos per month. Question number two. I have a BPI credit card that I always pay in full every month and a personal cash loan that I never miss to pay monthly as well. Will this help me with my loan? So credit cards are usually not a basis for the banks when they give you a loan. So sometimes we can think that, oh, I have a 100,000 credit limit or a 50,000 credit limit. Perhaps it will help me have uh, credibility with my bank. But actually, the banks don't really look at your credit limit as a source of income. So it's, unfortunately, it's not really something uh, that the banks will take into consideration. So just make sure that you pay your credit card bills on time of course so that the bank can also see that you're a good payer question number three i can provide a certificate of earnings but not a certificate of employment since it is not available in upwork will the banks recognize this so although you can provide your certificate of earnings to the banks you can still submit these the banks will be more likely to look at your bank statements if you don't have a certificate of employment. So the best thing that you can do is that you can prepare your bank statements in such a way wherein be sure that you have income coming in every month between three to six months. The safest would be a six month period. Question number four. I do have a TIN number and I pay voluntary contribution in Pagibig every month. 
but I still don't know how to pay taxes as a freelancer, which means I cannot provide any ITR. Will this be a problem? So it's okay if you can't provide an ITR just yet, especially if you are uh, reserving a pre-selling property because for pre-selling, you still have a couple of years until you'll actually take out a bank loan. But there are definitely some instances where in the bank doesn't really require you to have an ITR, although it's always good to have one. The most important is your proof of income. So that's your bank statements. The best would be really to have a permanent position if you can. But if you don't have that yet, then definitely the certificate of earnings and the bank statements would be your best bet. Question number five. Do I need to work on my ITR first before acquiring a unit? So technically, no, you don't need to have an ITR just yet before you acquire a unit. All you need to have is a TIM number. So a TIM number is very, very important when you want to acquire a, acquire a unit, even if it's still pre-selling, because this is definitely a requirement from the developers that you need to have your TIN number already. So this is something that you definitely need to have and definitely need to work on. So even if you don't have an ITR, that's fine as long as you have your TIN number. Question number six. How much do you think I can loan from banks or pag-ibig financing? So this one actually goes back to the first question, right? So it depends on your income and it also depends on your status as a status of employment. So if you are a freelancer and you are you don't have a permanent position yet with the with your employer, then what will be considered is only between 35 to 50 percent of your gross income. So you can actually still, shall I say, take a bet if you want to purchase a pre-selling unit as long as you can be sure that within the time frame of turnover because there are some units that take four years to turn over. So maybe in four years, you can have a permanent position already. So you can have a bigger loanable amount and that the whole gross income, your whole gross income can be considered as uh, a basis for your loan. Question number seven. If approved, do you need to pay both the equity and monthly amortization simultaneously? Or am I going to pay for the equity first and once ready for turnover, is that when I will need to pay for the monthly amortization? So this will depend on the developer that you would like to purchase a unit with. So I would suggest if you are still a bit tight on cash, I would suggest that you would go for developers who will only require you to pay the monthly equity first. So these projects are usually those projects that have a longer turnover period. So there are definitely condominium units out there that take four years to build and maybe sometimes a little bit more but I think the most common time frame is four years so within that four years you can actually pay your equity and then the amortization the monthly amortization of your loan from the bank will only start once you've already sort of finished or you're almost done with your equity payment so in this way it's also lighter for you and it won't be heavy for you to pay both the equity and the monthly amortization at the same time. So just choose a project, choose a developer wherein they will only require you to pay the equity first and you also have a long period to wait before the turnover. Question number eight. What about RFO units? Do I need to pay both the monthly equity and monthly amortization simultaneously? Okay, when we're talking about RFO units, this actually means ready for occupancy. So RFO, ready for occupancy. And you can definitely expect that the developer will require you to either pay the whole amount of the equity 
or they will need you to pay the equity in a shorter amount of time simply because the unit is already there. So that means on the side of the developer, they would already like to be paid because they can already turn over the unit to you. So if you are still on a budget and you don't really need to live in that particular unit just yet, then it would be best to go for pre-selling projects. So unless you really need a place to move into right away, I would suggest go for pre-selling so you won't have to be burdened with having to pay the full bulk of the equity at one time. Question number nine. 